This is your homework helper, Mrs. Anderson. Today I will help you with lesson four, multiply whole numbers and fractions. Let's look at the example here. We have two thirds times nine. Oh, equals six. Actually, this is, I'm sorry, I've got ahead of myself. This is the estimate. Leon has taken 10 days to finish his art project. He used two thirds of his time to paint the project. For how many days did Leon paint his project? We're going to do 10 times 2 thirds. Okay, now that we have 10 times 2 thirds, we know that 10 can be made into a fraction by putting a 1 underneath it. Then what we're going to do is say that 10 wholes or 10 ones times by 2 thirds is the same as 10 times 2 and 1 times 3 on the bottom. So now let's figure it out. 10 times 2 is 20 and 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, so we have solved. We have the answer, but this is an improper fraction. So we need to simplify by finding a mixed number. So we're going to write 20 in a division box and divide by 3. 3 can't go into 2. 3 goes into 20 six times. 3 times 6 is 18. When I subtract, I get 2. Okay, so 2 is my remainder. I'm going to put 2 up here as a numerator. I'm going to write my remainder as a fraction. And then 3 will be in my denominator. So my answer is 6 and 2 thirds. So for how many days did Leon paint his project? For 6 days and then 2 thirds of another day. So that's our answer there. All right, let's go ahead and practice a few, and we're going to write in simplest form. So here I have 2 thirds times 12. I'm going to write 12 as a fraction, and then I'm going to uh, multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. 2 times 4 is 24. That's multiplying the numerators, and then I'm going to multiply the denominators. 3 times 1 is 3. Now I have 24 divided by 3. I'm going to write 24 in a division box. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. And I do not have a remainder. So this is my answer, so I'll write it here on the line. Okay, when I take 2 thirds times 12, my answer is 8. Okay, let's do one more together here. Here I have 3 tenths times 8. The first thing I'm going to do is put a 1 under the whole number. Now I'm going to multiply my numerators. 3 times 8 is 24, and 10 times 1 is 10. So I have 24 tenths. My numerator is larger than my denominator. So I'm going to write 24 in a division box and divide by 10. 10 goes into 24 two times. 2 times 10 is 20. When I subtract, I get 4. This 4 is going to be, is the remainder, but I write it as a numerator. Then I look right here to see what I'm dividing by, and that is my denominator. So my answer is 2 and 4 tenths. But I can see that I can simplify this. So I'm going to extend my fraction bar and figure out what the greatest common factor is of 4 and 10. The greatest common factor is 2. So I'll do 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So my answer is actually 2 and 2 fifths. Okay, you'll go ahead and work on the rest of this page. On the back, the first problem solving problem says, the length of a popcorn machine is 3 fourths of its height. What is the length of the machine? So I'm looking at this popcorn machine, and I can see the height is 24 inches. And the length right here is 3 fourths of this. So to figure that out, I'm going to take 3 fourths times 24. And then I'll solve this just like I did on the front. 3 times 24, write the answer. 4 times 1, write the answer. And then whatever the number is here, we'll go in a division box and divide by 4. And my answer will be what the length of this machine is. Number eight, Quentin is making bread and wants to triple the recipe. 
The recipe calls for two thirds cup of sugar. How much sugar will he need? Well, if he wants to triple the recipe, that means he's timesing by three. He's making the recipe three times, basically. So I'm gonna take three times two thirds to get the answer. Okay, Joe Quinn has $24. He used five eighths of his money to buy a pair of jeans. How much money did Joe Quinn spend on jeans? I'm gonna take the $24 and multiply it by five eighths to figure out how much he spent on jeans. All right, let's look at number 10. You're gonna write and solve a real world problem involving the multiplication of a fraction and a whole number whose product is between 10 and 15. So I'm gonna look at these three up here. This one was measurement. We did length times height. This one here was a recipe. And we, recipe, uh, we multiplied a fraction of a cup by how many we needed. This one was money. We took uh, a total amount of money and then took a fraction of that money. So you can write a problem like any of these or think of something of your own. What I'm gonna do is do a measurement problem. So I'm gonna do one like this, but I'm gonna say that I have a bird cage and my bird cage is going to be 20 inches uh, long. And then I'm gonna say that the height is less than 20 inches, let's see. Maybe it won't be a bird, maybe it'll be a cage for something smaller. I'm gonna say that uh, this height is going to be three-fourths the size of the length. Okay, so I'll need to write that down. The length of a cage is 20 inches. Then I'll say the height is three-fourths of 20 inches or three-fourths of the length. Okay, how much, uh, how, how tall is the cage? Well, now I'm gonna figure it out to see if it'll work. If I take 20 and I times by three-fourths, 20 times three is 60, one times four is four, so I'll need to divide 60 by four. Uh, four goes into 60 one time, and four goes into 25 times. Oh, it worked perfect. The product's gonna be 15, so I did follow the directions. The product needed to be between 10 and 15. Okay, let's look at number 11. Rico is making punch for 18 people. How much punch should Rico make if each person will drink one six gallon of punch? I'm gonna multiply 18 times one six. Thanks for watching this homework helper video. If you have questions, feel free to ask me tomorrow at school.